<laughs> this is Yang Hong and uh, uh, working on the BPF and uh, mostly the BPF or LLVM part. And uh, uh, so I'm also a BPF or uh, backend uh, maintainers for LLVM side. And so uh, I will give some kind of like uh, uh, verifier issues and uh, specific with LLVM and also some of the work we are doing. So let's go to the next one. And uh, uh, first, uh, let me uh, briefly explain the workflow and uh, from the BPF program and uh, to the uh, eventually BPF program run in the kernel. And uh, typically, BPF program is written in C, and although you can written in assembly code and a different way to write, and but C is the most popular one. And uh, currently, both GCC and the uh, client is able to generate a uh, object file. And although client probably is widely used at this moment. And uh, once you get an object file, and uh, there's a uh, library called libpf, and uh, which do some preprocessing and uh, do some relocation resolution and uh, pack some kind of like an instruction stream together if you have a sub function calls. And uh, then you get a program and uh, with some additional information. This program will load it into kernel, and uh, then the next step inside the kernel will be verification. That's a crucial part of the uh, BPF ecosystem. And uh, the verif verification has to succeed and uh, before you actually can JIT and uh, run. JIT means just in time compilation, you uh, translate the BPF program uh, in BPF instruction and uh, to the native instructions. And so the main goal of verification is the two folds. And the first is the program eventually will end. Well, this end is a quotation mark because verification has its limit. And for example, current maximum uh, verification, uh, the, the number of instructions verification uh, try to uh, verify is 1 million. If you have a huge loop and uh, it probably won't work. And even it eventually end, still verification will fail. In that particular case, the suggest is you try to have a function calls and this offload some of the verification work to a different function. And uh, the second goal is the program cannot, should not cause a kernel crash. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, safety uh, verification and in the verifier. So oh, this, uh, uh, this slide shows a little bit more information about uh, kernel verification. And the first, uh, uh, it is a flow or path sensitive. So every possible path is explored and uh, to ensure program is safe. And uh, so basically we try every path come to the exit. You have to be safe. And a few other techniques in verifier. And uh, uh, first we try to maintain the register and the stack states and uh, during the uh, pass exploration. And because it could be tons of passes, so pruning is a crucial technique and to speed speed up verification. So you, if a pass and at a particular checkpoint has been explored, and uh, uh, that means it is safe, and later on you come to the same checkpoint, you find okay, and the previous pass already done, and you can skip that. So this is a crucial technique and I try to speed up. And also simple liveness analysis. And uh, so or if you have a write and later on you don't have a read, there's some special processing in verifier. And uh, also uh, sometimes uh, you need a precise range for scalars and uh, because different scalar and uh, may have uh, impact uh, on the path you explore. For example, for uh, conditional instructions and uh, you need a, a precise register, a precise scalar so or it may in different uh, uh, cases and go to different uh, branch and uh, so the register here the register and uh, states actually the scalar numbers is represented by the tina is a, a tertiary number basically the three states and uh, this is a trade-off uh, the kernel uh, people made in the very beginning of verification verifier. And you try to represent uh, numbers in reasonable preciseness. And it is not as good as a list of uh, 
like uh, ranges, but is good enough. And uh, complete formal verification is known to be a uh, NP complete. So uh, we cannot do that in verify, and it's just not possible. So uh, what we actually want to do is uh, fast verification time. And uh, especially in some cases, it's crucial. And uh, for example, you have a DDoS, right? And a kind of like attack. And uh, you find your patterns, you want to replace it. And the verification time uh, program has to be verified before load. So you want really short verification time. And so your program can load, can fight against the DDoS. And uh, also we want to control the verifier complexity because currently verifier already were complex, more than 10,000 lines of code. And uh, uh, it's very hard and only a few people like Alexei and uh, like uh, some other people can understand. And uh, so to, to, to uh, fulfill these two needs and fast verification time and uh, uh, the reasonable complexity, Verify will not be able to maintain too much information. And uh, so we try to uh, have a reasonable information like uh, register uh, stack slots, liveness, and uh, sometimes we maintain some kind of like a register equivalence. And uh, so the goal is to try to uh, have a uh, faster verification and the correct verification, but sometimes this indeed may cause a verification failure. So uh, people have different ways and uh, including uh, users and uh, the kernel community and uh, try to <coughs> prevent verification failures in their code. So there's uh, typically two ways to do that. The first is let the compiler do the work and the compiler hopefully will generate a verifier friendly code and uh, by checking certain patterns and which is not accepted by verifier. And uh, the second is uh, uh, modify the source code and uh, some source code. And uh, if you understand the verifier uh, failure log, you identify particular places and you can play with that with some assembly code and force uh, ordering and uh, or use the uh, uh, inline assembly and try emulate the functionality you try to achieve. And in this case, you can also uh, pass a verification. And, uh, but from the uh, community perspective, and uh, we really want to actually, and the source code uh, uh, can be changed by, uh, basically <laughs> organization can be done by the compiler. So we minimize the uh, uh, user's overhead, try to scrutinize what's going on and try to hack through. So uh, in the next few slides, I will give a few examples and uh, real examples happens and uh, uh, in the uh, verification process and uh, it fails and how we resolve that. And so give you an idea and uh, what kind of problem we try to attack in. And in this particular case, and uh, it is uh, simple and you have uh, two conditions and you try to say, okay, if less than four or greater than 12, return zero, otherwise you do something. And, but you can see there's a two conditional here, but the verify, uh, but the compiler is so smart and it actually generates code with one condition. And for example, it say minus three and compare it to a FF, FF, some seven, and then you go to next. And in this particular case, you can see initially the assignment temp equals ID. And the compiler then has some temp operations. And after the comparison, Temp less than this one, you get a narrow temp range. But later on, and uh, the ID is used. But from a verifier perspective, ID is still the original ID. It's a it's a unknown number. The range is uh, from minus infinity to basically minus range and to the maximum range. And in this particular case, verification will fail because and. Uh, V plus ID is ID offset could be huge and uh, the verification verifier doesn't like it. So this is the case and we already fixed in the compiler side to work around this issue. And another use case is uh, uh, for old kernels. 
and sometimes uh, and uh, uh, we improve the verifier because well somebody dis discovered a problem and uh, or we, we ourselves find the problem and with the new introduction of BPL program itself. And in, in such cases, we are able to fix the issue or improve the verifier with the latest kernel. But it will be not easy actually to backport because the verifier changed a lot. And in this particular case, we want to patch LLVM. And uh, so the uh, older kernel can still use newer LLVM and try to work around the issue. And this is an example, and we fixed at the LLVM side. And uh, so, see, in this case, you have I equal to a constant and I equals to a register. Basically, all oh, no. And you do a bunch of things. And the uh, compiler transform to uh, this register and this constant and use this constant as an upset. But this upset is still aware. So, in some cases, in all the kernels, this upset, the upper, and is considered it just a arbitrary number. And uh, because some limitations in, uh, in the verifier. So for all the kernels and uh, this will not work because this transformation and verification will fail. And uh, so we have to patch the LLVM so people can use a little bit of older LLVM and uh, try to compile for the kernels. This is a second use case. And the third one actually it related to the uh, manual source code to do the work. And uh, in verifier, and we don't really like two value all, and this two value both are pointers. And, but this actually is possible. And uh, in this particular case, and original code is like a walk is a pointer or funk, and uh, the LLVM happily generate uh, all operation for these two pointers, but verifier will fail in this case. And uh, although we could actually did do that in the LLVM as well, but we somehow didn't do that. And we just work around the issue with a barrier variable. Barrier variable is an assembly code, which is just read, write, or walk, but actually didn't do anything. Eventually, it will be a no op. It, it prevents this optimization. Uh, there are quite some cases in self-test and uh, try to use the barrier variable or assembly code. And uh, I think if any people interested can, can look at it to see whether it can help and uh, improve the compiler. Uh, okay, I think this is uh, <coughs> how to generate a verified friendly code. And uh, well, we, we, we all like it and the LLVM community could do that. And the current approach is uh, uh, we have several backend passes. The backend passes uh, and uh, try to generate a fr uh, basically verify friendly code, essentially by similar idea is a barrier variable. It just put different intrinsics. Is it, it's intrinsics and basically it act as a gate and prevent a certain optimization. And uh, so this is the current use, but we are not really happy with this because this is something we try to either modify and IR and try to prevent a certain optimization, or we try to undo some optimization. For example, existing paths, they do some optimization. We don't like it and uh, it causes verification failure. We have to undo that. So we provide an alternative approach and basically is a TTI hooks, a list of TTI hooks, and uh, it try to disable certain really specific, not passes, but some transformation inside a particular pass and which are uh, performed by the middle end optimization. And um, all these passes mostly including some passes the instruction combine and also in the simplified CFG. And, uh, but this, this approach actually is rejected by the uh, upstream and uh, upstream actually prefer the legalization, IR legalization, the similar, uh, and we try to insert a, a bunch of buildings and uh, in the IR and uh, try to enforce certain kind of like ordering.
And uh, another approach actually is uh, uh, try to provide the option. And uh, this option and uh, can provide a separator of optimization passes and also allow uh, the, this optimization pass try to customize and uh, with uh, B, to generate the BPF friendly code, essentially. You provide this option and this option available. And for this pass, we have this option. And then we could do a little bit of tailoring, like, okay, this is verifiable, this is not verifiable. And for different targets, they have different meanings. So we, we could do that, I think. And uh, how to do that? And this is only an idea at this point, there's no implementation yet. Uh, yeah, this is all the slides from my side. And uh, any questions? Or the Jose will do the next. Um, for the, uh, the the passes, the pass pipeline, are you, are you trying to use? Sorry. Oh. The speaker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, for the, the passes, are you trying to just use Clang as the driver and not use opt? Because if you use opt command line utility, you have very fine grained control over. You can explicitly list. Uh -huh what passes you do want to run or not want to run and in what order or not. So op, the command line utility opt, that's part of LLVM. If you use that, you can say clang, you have it emit LLVM IR, but then you use opt to find tailor what passes of LLVM you want to run or not run. I, I, I know there's a pass, and, but I'm not uh, familiar with ops. So maybe we can discuss it later. Yeah, yeah. OK. Cool. Sounds good. This won't work. It's not a pass. You cannot disable it. Like, oh, please don't do. Like, what we're trying to do there is like add another flag, and there we gain the flag. So it's not a pass. It's not something that you can do either with opt or with like manually creating the passes. One of the options we consider it is to have like our own set of just enable the passes that we know will work. But this is much further. It's like breaking down into like inner bits of one particular pass. So it's not the pass itself. Uh, so there's a yeah another thing called opt in LVM, a class for command line options, and a lot of passes will have flags to custom tailor the pass itself. But you can add them. We, we actually try to add a hook which is yeah. similar to flag, and we initially propose the flag actually add a flag and so backend can override is a is a global variable we can override that is rejected. And then we we'll go to the TTI hook and also reject it. But it was like the global flag, it was a CL opt or no? Yes, it is a CL. It's a global error, but it's a CL, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So then there's some pushback on the I have two questions. Question number one you do all the fixes in the LLVM tool chain and as a case by case base, basically? Uh, right, it's it's yes. basically it's it's basically it just another heuristic on top of another heuristic, right? Something like that. Yeah. So it's which basically becomes arm race, right? It's uh, 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 the verifier changes and you have to react, right? Uh, the second question: I Have which LLVM versions do you have all these patches in? Always the latest. <laughs> so it's an <laughs> ongoing battle. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah, I, I did not specify and for this particular mm -hmm. one, and actually you can take out the Well, you yeah, there are alternative approaches to that. Uh -huh. Basically, you can you can take a look at the verifier code, and you can generate a proof either in Isabel or on the cock, and then you can can generate the BPF program code based on those proofs. Right. Yes. That's it's 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 more it's more complex, but it's a little bit more. Uh, uh, scalable, right? Yes, that's from BPF side to the uh, LLV side. Yes, that's true. Yeah. But actually, we are doing. So, just to clarify, so it's not the race against the verifier; it's against race against the LLVM. Well, all the all the all the peculiarities you have to deal with are inside the verifier, right? Uh, no, in this case, it's LLVM. That's LLVM changes that we all constantly have to fight with. LVM changes, LVM adds another optimization, or, and then we have to react on the LVM side and verifier side. It's well, not the other way around. The BPF program code is very simple. Majority of optimization passes not, around it, right? Not really. Not really. That's what we did. Not really. 
<laughs> programs are thousand lines of code. Yeah, but the stack size is it's tiny, right? Uh, so most of the code is in line. No, it's not aligned at all. Majority of it should be in line, otherwise you'll no. <laughs> You're talking about state of VPF that was ten years ago. Now it's not now it's not at all in line. Okay. I'm, I'm curious on uh, how did you decide the list of the transformation that should be disabled for the from the verifier? From the how do you BPM program? It's uh, it's go backward from BPM program when uh, the which one was a problem with oh, the it's, it's, okay. it's not we can imagine this is no go backwards. Okay. So then that list might be uh changed later yeah, if you found be, more yeah. Oh. No, could be. That's a that that's a thing I discussed with Jose. Just a single um, option and mm. there, and then during the uh, LLVM changes, and we can actually change internal and which one to disable, which one not disable. So okay. we don't really explicitly specify the command. So the list for GCC and for LLVM are, are same. No. no, no, it will be different because the organization are different. Okay, but the verifier are the same, right? The Number the same. Okay, well, the same. Verifier could be the same, and there is another verifier called the Prevail, and by, right. uh, Microsoft currently using, which is even more problematic because they do not use a path sensitive. They use this loop summary, uh. summary, and they have more verification failures. So I'm not sure how to address that yet. So the verifier rule. Is it is is there some definitely rule right in the verifier? No. It is in the kernel. To look at the kernel code, there are some rules, but but the rules are fixed or it's still changed. Evolving is evolving. The kernel version to kernel version are evolving. Oh, okay. Even the verifier are changing. Yes. From kernel to different kernel version, the verifier rule are changing. They add different. Okay. We, 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 we will try not to have a backward uh, break. Really, previous verifier successful, we try to be successful again. Okay. But, but verifier changes. And uh, another question is whether it's possible to, yeah, if the verifier, you, you, we have a list of the rule, is it's possible to uh, make the rule in a higher level language? Then the user, when they write the C, C code, they know what kind of code is Verifier good. Is based on the, you can consider mostly based on the assembly. Assembly. So state, state, state. Then when verify uh, field, the user, it's very di difficult for the user to change their code. Yeah. They're, they're so that's a, that's a gap. There's a gap, yeah. right? Some advanced user can do that. Some some user will seek help in the next. Is it possible to make the lower level verifier rule become higher level language rule? 